everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. And everybody, praise the Lord, for he has done great things. Amen? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's lift up our voices and tell him how wonderful he has been to us. If we are here and if there is breath in our lungs, we should be excited about what God has done and what God is about to do. So this morning, Jesus, we praise you. We lift up your name. Jesus, we exalt you. King of kings and Lord of lords, you you are the one that kept us this week and that's why we praise you. We praise the name that is above all names. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you for life. We thank you for strength. We thank you for clothing us, not just with the physical clothes, but God, for clothing us in our right minds. We thank you, Jesus, for not forgetting us. We thank you, God, that you are mindful of us. We thank you, Jesus, that we have this thing called salvation where we can come to you and know that all things work together because you love us and we love you and because we are the called hallelujah we bless you God hallelujah come on let's lift up a praise this morning has he been good to you has God done something for you mighty God he is worthy this morning of your best praise he is worthy. I always say worthy even more than a little golf clap. My God, if he's been good, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Worthy, worthy. You know, I came, and as they begin the song, I came this morning after, like, I would say a, a rough week, and I said, but I'm going to praise you, God. But... I know that I think we always used to say yet praise. We have a yet praise. I know that everything isn't going well, but in spite of, I will praise you. I will yet praise you, Lord. Let's bless the name. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. No one. 
done great things. I don't know, but I can testify that God has done great things. And I don't, I, okay, I, some, some I see new faces and I always share this, so maybe the team is tired of me sharing this, but I love to share my testimony. When I say God has done great things, I'm not talking about Moses and I'm not talking about Noah or even the apostles. I'm talking about in, in my life, like present day. God has done great things. I stand before you. I'm, before this, like there was a time before this where I wouldn't have been able to glorify God. I had nothing. I was supposed to be going in for vocal surgery and I was just, I was struggling. I had to take six months off. Then I went back and I had to go to work on like a sick leave because I had no voice. My students actually to this day can say, I remember when you used to come to work and have to write all the instructions on the board. And I remember standing here saying, God, I, I don't want to go for surgery because the outcome was uncertain. My, my ENT specialist said, I, you know, you can go for surgery and the nodes will be gone, but I can't promise you that you'll sing. And I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> I don't preach. You know, and I, and I teach. That's what I do. I use my voice all day. So I stood here. Pastor was here and the, the gentleman came and they said, does anyone want to come up for healing? And I said, Jesus, if you do this, I will use my voice to bless you all the time. Yes. Stood here and he prayed. And from that day forth, I have not lost my voice once. So you're going to have to excuse me when I get a little crazy. It's because my God has done great things. Yes. And I could stand here all day and talk about how my God has been good. And you can have him as your God as well. And you can be excited because he can do great things great things for you he has done great things so let's worship the king let's bow at his feet this morning this next song is new so i i hope they're able to get the words if not we'll lead you in this one come on Let us worship our King. Hey, go okay. ahead. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. So see what our Savior has done. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcome. He has done great things. Come on, come on. He has done great things. Oh God, oh God, oh God, you 
the grave you freed every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your praise yeah we can you king for you reign God forever and ever thanks thanks I give you thanks same key for all you have done I am so blessed my soul has found rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks, we thank you Lord, thanks, thanks, oh I give you thanks for all you've done for all. Give you the 
the sun to the going down of the same God. You're worthy of our praise this morning. From age to age and for the rest of our days, God, you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, let's just clap our hands in the sanctuary. Let's give him some praise. Worthy to be praised. God, you are worthy. You are worthy, God.
or the bank, a family situation, wherever the report has come from. And I hear the voice of the Holy Ghost asking you a question today. This is a word for God for, for somebody here today. And the Holy Ghost is asking you this question. Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Maybe the doctor says there's no hope. Whose report will you believe? Maybe the doctor said it's getting worse. Whose report will you believe? Maybe the banker says there's just no way.
worship has created the atmosphere for a miracle in this room. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yes, 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 yes. Spirit of the living God, move in this room now, I pray. Hey! Come on, you came here needing a miracle. You came here needing an answer. You came here needing a breakthrough. Come on, this is your moment right now. Right now, raise your hands. Raise your voice. Yes! 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 
Yes. I command every sickness in this room to go. Yes. I command pain to leave your body. I command everybody that's bound with a spirit of addiction to be loose in the presence of God. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. Yes. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. My God, if you're going to break through, first you got to break out. Come on. Break out of your fear. Bring out a break out of your anxiety. Break out of pride. Break out of your tradition. Break out, break out, break out. So you can get your breakthrough. Break out so you can get your breakthrough. You don't need another normal church service. You need the power of God to hit you. Come on. You don't need another song. You need a demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I wish somebody that hasn't shouted in a long time would just shout right now. Can you hear me out there? Somebody who hasn't shouted in a long time, just throw your head back in the air and shout one time right now. Go ahead. <laughs> Some of you want to be free. You've been caged up too long. Go for it. Be free in Jesus' name. for you today in case you're wondering this is not just another spirit filled church but this is a fire filled church <laughs> the Holy Ghost and fire resides in this place hey hallelujah hallelujah my God I can't help it one more time would you clap and shout clap and shout unto the Lord clap and shout unto the Lord Clapping is the sign. Clapping is the language of authority. God is giving you victory today. In Jesus' name. Pastor Ose is going to come right now. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Lord is in this place today. The Lord is in this place right now. And the Lord is here to heal you. Your healing is here today. I want you to know that. We are not doubting that. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27. The Lord said, Behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard? Did you see that? Is there anything too hard for me to do? That's God talking. That's God talking. Is there anything too hard? Yesterday in prayer meeting, our pastor was saying that the Lord was telling him that if you want it, you can have it. And today again, Pastor Nidra stood here and told you of her testimony and he said... That same God is available to you if you want it. You want it this morning? You want what the Lord can do this morning? You need the healing in your life this morning? Lift your hands to heaven. 
and say to the Lord, I receive your healing. Hey, Makatalaba. Say to him, I receive your healing. I came here sick, but I'm leaving this place healed. And you begin to do what you cannot do before, what you could not move before. You begin to check out those seeds because when the Lord had healed you, you have to act in faith and begin to do what you could not do before. If the pain was in your waist, begin to move, move your waist. If it was in your neck, begin to move your neck. What you cannot do before, the Lord has done it and is established. Hallelujah. So in this church, we are not talking about a dead God. We are talking about a living God. And a God approved. Hallelujah. You see the testimony. You see the wonderful testimonies. Of what the Lord is doing in this place. We can share all the testimony of healing that the Lord is doing here. But the Lord, the Lord does not want you to live here sick today. By the time you are living here, you are living here healed. And that's God's plan for you. Hallelujah. This morning, why we're still in this mood of healing, we shall be praying for some of our brethren. Um, shall be praying for some of our brothers and sisters that are not with us right now, that's somewhere. Sister Abraham Craig Thompson. Craig Thompson. Skeeter Paul. And Beatrice. We shall be praying for these people. I want you to stretch your hand towards the altars. We lift these people up. The Lord knows them and know them by their name and knows their heart desire. The Lord knows where they are right now. Lord, I ask for your awesome power that is at work in this place right now to visit those rooms where these people are. Lord, I pray that you will raise them up from their sick bed. Yes, 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 yes. Your healing. Your healing power. Jesus upon these people of yours, Lord. You that is at work in us, you that is at work at Believers Church. We pray that your power will rest upon them right now. And they're going to be changed in their situation from this moment, from this moment, from this moment. Lord, I pray that you rest upon them from this moment. Let there be a shaking right now. Let there be a shaking in that room. Let there be a shaking in that life. Healing upon their body. Healing in their blood. Healing in their hearts. Healing in all their organs. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I believe you are able to do this and that's why we're asking for this. Lord, we believe you are able to do this and that's why we're asking for this. Leader Kabbalah Daba. There shall be testimonies regarding all that we've asked in the mighty name of Jesus. Wave your hands to the heavens and celebrate the Lord this morning. Just celebrate him. Just celebrate the Lord and say, Lord, I celebrate your wonders. I celebrate you, Lord. I celebrate you. You are great. Amen. Hallelujah. It is so good to see Jeremy in church with us this morning. Been a long time. Been a long time since we've seen him. Would you stretch your hands to the front right now? Upon the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus, we speak healing to Jeremy right now. Perfect health and healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We stand on the word of God that you are our healer, O oh God. And we speak health and healing. Lord, each day there will be a difference and an increase, O oh God, until complete healing has come. And let the church say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And one more time, clap your hands to the Lord in this house, in Jesus' name.
I think we can do better than that. This is not a Presbyterian church. Come on, somebody. This is a spirit-filled church in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We got a reason to be loud today. Hallelujah. There's some free people in the room. Hallelujah. One more time. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We're going to continue this atmosphere this morning before we get our pastor on to minister the word to us. And uh, we're going to take up the offering today. Sister Diane will be at the back if you want to give by debit or credit. We're going to have the offering plates up here at the front. But before we do all of that, I just want to read us a little, a little brief story for the offering. And uh, it's about John Wesley. I think if we've been around church for a minute, we probably know who that man is. And uh, Wesley was a man who was greatly impacted by an event which occurred while he was a student at Oxford. After purchasing some pictures for his room, he noticed one cold winter that one of the chambermaids had nothing to protect her except the thin linen gown. When he reached into his pocket to give her some money to buy a coat, he found he had too little left. Immediately, the thought struck him that the Lord was not pleased with the way he had spent his money. He asked himself, Will thy master say, Well done, good and faithful steward, thou hast adorned thy walls with money, which might have screened the poor creature from this cold? O justice, O mercy, are these not pictures? Are not these pictures the blood of this poor maid? From that day forward, in 1731, Wesley determined to maintain his standard of living at the same level and give away everything above that threshold. At that time, with earnings of 30 pounds, those are like England dollars, he gave away 2 pounds when his earnings increased to 60 pounds. He gave away 32 as they increased to 120 pounds. He continued to live on 28 and give away 92 pounds. Wesley became known for his saying, What should rise is not the Christian standard of living, but his standard of giving. He continued this practice in his entire life. Even when his income reached 1,400 pounds, he lived on the same 30 pounds and gave the rest away. Because Wesley had a fear of laying up treasures on earth, the money went out to charity as quickly as it came, and he reports that he never had 100 pounds to his own usage at one time. And I just want to challenge us today. I'm not here saying, oh, well, I want you to live in the poverty level and give away everything you have. But whatever area it is in our life, and I'm guilty of this, you know, oh, all of us, every Christian is, we can be worshiping more. We can be praying more. We can be reading more. And yes, we can be giving more and reaching out a hand more. But it starts, you know, when the Bible tells us to live modestly, it's not only talking about clothes. And yes, we should dress and be different than the world. But it's talking about how we steward our money how we're how we taking care of what what is god given to us what are we doing with the blessings of god are we being faithful with the resources that he's giving us are we being faithful in our jobs and our schools and wherever he may have placed us are we being proper witnesses are we being good worshipers in church and showing the lost and dying world what this jesus is all about so today i'm not asking you to you know give way more or anything like that but i want you to bless the lord today and and test him. The Bible says to test him in this and see if he will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there won't be enough room for us to contain it. We don't give to be blessed, but we give to support the work of God. And because how many love this ministry? Amen. We all, all the pastors here, we work, we work. We're not getting rich. We don't have a private jet fund for Pastor Wayne or anything like that, but we're here because there's a need in the inner city. The inner city needs Jesus, and it takes money to reach the inner city. Amen? So at this time, just continue this atmosphere of worship and in your giving. We're going to march around the front. Please be mindful of social distancing and all that sort of thing. Sister Diane is at the back if you want to give by debit or credit. We can also go to the Tithely app in the App Store or the Play Store. Also, www.thebelieverschurch.ca under the online giving section. God bless you guys this morning. As you give, we're going to sing another course in Jesus' name.
Crown him this morning with a thousand hallelujahs. Let's give amen, a hallelujah, a clap out there for the Lord. You know, as pastor was calling people for healing this morning, I thought of the gate beautiful, you know, how the, the cripple came to the gate. It was a temple gate where people would gather, and he was crippled. He was lame from birth. And he would be carried to the gate every day, begging is what he was doing. Peter and John were walking by one particular day, going for prayer at 3 in the afternoon, and he looked up, and he was begging. And the disciple looked down, and he said, silver and gold I cannot give you, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that was healing in his body. This man stood up, he walked, he jumped, he ran into the temple, praising God. And that's what we are doing in Believer's Church, believe me. There's healing, there's miracles in this place. It's happening every time we meet, really. This isn't a, in a once in a while. This is every service, every prayer meeting. There's healing, healing, healing everywhere. Whether that's your heart that's broken, whether it's your body that's broken, whether it's your... Uh, physical or mentally, it doesn't matter. God will heal, heal, heal. That's who he is, the healer. He's creator God, and he's the healer of the universe. Amen? Amen? God bless you this morning. Wonderful to see you here this morning. We're going to go into next week with our first uh, Tuesday night. And I think we're familiar with this. This is Celebrate Recovery, 12-step, Christ-based program, I might add. And this is where there's healing. God is in that place, and he's there waiting to meet you. And for some, I know there's some here this morning that God's been knocking on your heart, and you've been struggling. This is for people that are struggling with habits, hurts, hang-ups. God is there. That is Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Wednesday night is our revival, another amazing night here in the sanctuary. Revival, that's where we're headed. That's what we've been praying for. We didn't start yesterday. We've been praying for a while. And we can see the move of God. It's, it's wonderful. It's tremendous, really. It's, that's Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, revival service. Pastor is teaching, preaching us how we are going into that revival. And he's taking us. We're, we're on the edge. We're on the edge. You don't want to miss it. And you want to be a part of that revival. Amen? Do I hear an amen? amen? You bet. You bet. Saturday night prayer meeting. Speechless. Speechless. This is, you know what? This is the furnace. This is where the fire is. And this is where the fire sweeps through here every time we come. It's from the prayer meeting. It's from the prayer meeting. It's amazing what we're seeing here. And it is because we come here on Saturday night. At the meeting, the presence of God is so powerful. It, it's, I can't, I can't, I don't have words. I'm sorry. You have to come, you have to experience it. at 7 o'clock Saturday night. But this is where you'll find the fire, and this is where the fire reaches out to you people. Sunday morning, here we are, 11 o'clock service, and our pastor is going to speak this morning. Um, but before that, and I forgot this, <laughs> I'm glad I got this little card in front of me, because connect, it's so important. Connect. There's cards to fill out. If you're new here, please fill one out. It's wonderful to connect with these new people. Absolutely wonderful. I've met some wonderful people through these cards through text and some through phone calls. And it, it draws us together. We are a family at Believer's Church. We are a family. And we want this family to grow. And to grow, we have to connect. So fill out a card before you leave, please. Also, when you do leave, there will be, uh, the cafe will be open. There's coffee and there's pastries there. And uh, you're supporting the youth group as you give. So that is open this morning also. Now, baptism is coming up. Fourth week of the month. We don't have much longer. We have three people, I think, right now being baptized. But, yeah, amen. 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 God is so amazing. 
And uh, that's open to everybody. If you want to be baptized, fill out a card again. They're down at the back. Fill it out, please. It's important. It's part of your journey. Big part of your journey. A big part of your journey. And what else do we have here? I think that's about it, Pastor. So be blessed this morning. Pastor's going to bring you a message. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we pray over our pastor this morning as he brings the word. This man has blessed us over and over. He's so anointed, Lord, and continue the anointing on this man as he brings us into the presence of God. The fire of God is going to fall on this place this morning. It's going to come down. Heaven is going to meet earth here this morning, Father God. It always does. We don't have to anticipate it. We know it. We just know that you are in this place. And Lord, you're going to work through our pastor this morning. And we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. God bless. Thank you, Pastor Heather. Would you give that hand clap to Jesus Christ right now? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I have a few comments I want to make before we get into the Word of God. Amen. First of all, uh, we're, going to, we're looking for some help. We're looking for some kids workers to help us on uh, Wednesday nights and Saturday. Uh, we used to have kids club on Wednesday nights, and we had to, because we didn't have the staffing, we had to stop it. But on most Wednesday nights, we're seeing 20 and 30 little ones here, and we need to do something to support them during that time. So if you are interested in helping on Wednesday nights, can they see you, see you Pastor Dylan? All right, see Pastor Dylan about that. Um, and we're looking to get enough people that we just have a rotation so that on Wednesday nights, you only, if you sign up to help, you only do one Wednesday night a month, and we'll rotate people through. And I think we're going to have to look at the doing the same thing on Saturday nights as well. Last night, we had a record-breaking attendance at prayer meeting. We had 60 people in prayer meeting last night. Yeah, I think we need to give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. I didn't say six. I said 60 at a prayer meeting that went for two and a half hours. I seen some new folks there that haven't been there, and I thought, oh, Lord, are there... They're probably wondering, when does this ever get over? <clears throat> and I didn't know what to say because I didn't know when it was going to get over. Because I came to the pulpit to, to, to dismiss it and the Holy Ghost hit again. We went another half hour after that. Praise God. But God is moving at Believer's Church. And so uh, I think we're going to, and we had a pile of little ones here last night. And because we were occupied in the glory of God, they got occupied in other things. Uh, so we need some help Wednesday nights and Saturdays if you're available to help. See Pastor Dylan, amen. He's the young, good-looking pastor over here. And, uh, and let him know that you're interested in helping, amen. Also, we're looking for ushers. We, have, <clears throat> we, we really have no ushers in our church. Uh, we have people who work the door. But we need some qualified ushers, people who are willing to put their, uh, make it a ministry and stick to it. And so if you want to be part of the usher team, Amen. Uh, you can speak to, to me on that, and I would like to get some, some ushers. There are all kinds of ministry opportunities to get involved here at Believer's Church. We believe everybody ought to be involved somewhere, and God is sending us revival. We're seeing amazing things happen, and we want to get people plugged in as quickly as we can. Everybody say Believer's 101. It used to be called Faith 101 when we were called Wide World of Faith. And this was the new converts course that we had, and it would go for three or four hours on a Saturday. And uh, when COVID shut us down this last time, we just never have resurrected it again. But we feel like it's the time we, we, we've got to get back and get, uh, we call it Believers 101, up and running. And so we've, we've uh, tweaked it a little bit. It's not going to be three or four hours. It's probably going to be more like an hour and a half uh, on the third Saturday of every month. And I think we said we're going to do that at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock. What time did we say? None of us remembers. You think 4 o'clock? Does Susanna, is she in here or she step out? She keeps us all straight. Amen. <clears throat> This is Anya. Did we say Believers was going to be at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock? Believers 101. Do you remember? 4 o'clock? All right. So, sat, so not 
not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday at 4 o'clock, Believers 101. We'll be just serving coffee and maybe some donuts or something. But this is an opportunity for those who are new to Believers, and if you've never gone to one of these, um, all the pastors hopefully can make it. If not, the majority of us will be here. And we want to meet you. There are people who are coming to this church. I don't even know your name yet. And so I'll be there. We want to meet you. We want to get to know you. We want to give you just a quick overview of Believers Church and help you to get plugged in here. And so we invite you to come. Again, not next Saturday, but the Saturday following. We'll have Believers 101 at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Also, I don't have one up here, but we still have some of our Believers Church mugs for sale. They are $10, and they're at the back. You can see Sister Zanya if you want to purchase one of those. Amen. And I think I've seen Pastor Chris Bruce came in. I don't know where he is. Oh, that's right there. <laughs> Amen. Pastor from Fairford. Amen. We're glad to have him in here. He's uh, one of the sons of this house. Amen. We love him. And next, all right, this coming week, Friday night and Saturday night at 7, at 7 o'clock, service is there. They've just renovated their building, their church building. I've never preached in their building. I've always preached in the tent meetings that they have, but we're going to be inside their building that they've just renovated, built a big piece on the end of it. And so Friday night and Saturday night at 7 o'clock, we'll be there and uh, having a great time. And then they're having services on Sunday but we'll be coming home. We were, me and Pastor Dylan are renting a van. I think we've got six or seven of us going uh, up. And so uh, if there's anybody who wants to go up to those services, we encourage you to do that. If you want more information, you can talk to that young, good-looking fella there. And uh, he'll, he'll help you know how to, how to get there. Amen. It's going to be a great time in the presence of God. For those of us who will not be going and you're going to be in town, there will be prayer meeting here Saturday night. The doors will be open and people are encouraged to come and pray if you can't make it to Fairford. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Has anybody felt the presence of God this morning? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to bring you a brief word uh, from the word of God this morning. We are turning to uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 9. 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 9. Amen. If you have your Bibles, if not, we'll have it on the screen here. I, I talked a little bit about this um, at prayer meeting one night, and God just kind of stirred me up to bring it to you this morning in a bit of a different way than I've, uh, than I've mentioned it there. It says this, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the, on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be up with me, and that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. I want to minister from the Word of God and hopefully minister to somebody today on this topic, prayer of pain, prayer of pain. Father, we thank you for your presence. I thank you for everything you've already done in this service today. Lives that have been touched, people have been healed, those who have been encouraged. But God, I pray now that you would touch me as I bring your Word. Lord, your Word is forever settled in heaven and is exalted even above your name. And God, I pray that your word would have free course in this room to the, this morning, that lives would be changed by the power of the gospel, and we ask it in Jesus' name. And the church said, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. I, I was doing some study on the prayer of Jabez, and I made the statement at prayer meeting a few weeks ago that the prayer of Jabez was a very... Uh, very familiar and very popular scripture, very popular prayer in the 90s, in the early 90s. And even when I was in Bible college, I guess in 96 to 99, uh, if you heard everything was about the prayer of Jabez. Uh, you go to the Bible bookstore now, you'll find Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord. And that scripture has become very popular. And we have it on mugs and we have it on plaques and 
Uh, we have it on our Bible cases, on bookmarks. It's everywhere. But before that scripture really took off, there was a scripture, amen, about the prayer of Jabez that was the most popular. Amen. Mama's coming. <laughs> Amen. And so there was about the prayer of Jabez. And everywhere you looked was the prayer of Jabez. And on the mugs and on the on uh, uh, coasters and on Bible cases was the prayer of Jabez. And somebody even wrote a book about the prayer of Jabez. And it took off and sold, I can't remember how many millions of copies around the world. And then those who believed in divine wealth started getting a hold of the prayer of Jabez. And they started twisting the prayer to to back up their, their theology that everybody ought to drive a Rolls Royce and everybody ought to have billions of dollars. Man, I wish I could get on board with that theology, uh, but it's not really backed up in Scripture too much. Uh, and, and so because of, of what happened with the, with the divine wealth doctrine, people dropped it. All of a sudden, prayer of Jabez was dropped. Nobody... It was talking about it. There was no more plaques with it on there. Prayer of Jabez went out the window. But there's something I want to bring forward to you from the prayer of Jabez because the prayer of Jabez is not, it's not talking about uh, divine wealth. It's not talking about the prosperity gospel. Actually, uh, it, it, it's much more uh, uh, rudimentary than all of that. And I think it's going to hit uh, very close to home for a lot of people that are in this service today and attend this particular assembly. The Bible says that Jabez was an honorable man. We thank God for that. And he had a testimony that he was an honorable man. And he was actually more honorable, honorable than all of his brethren. But the Bible lets us, it doesn't tell us a lot, Pastor Ian. It doesn't tell us all of the history. But it tells us that Jabez uh, was named Jabez because Jabez, the word Jabez actually means pain. That's why we call it the prayer of Jabez. Today I've called it the prayer of pain. Prayer of pain. Because his name meant pain. And I don't know the situation surrounding his birth. It doesn't tell us. I don't know why, but the, his mother said, I am calling him pain. Can you imagine your mother called you pain? Hello? I've been called a pain in the butt. I just can't imagine he's born and the doctor hands, she looks at him, oh, look at the, this is little pain. Something painful happened, I think, more than just childbirth. There was something traumatic that happened in the life of Jabez and in the life of his mother and the, and the family. Something happened. That the Bible says that he was born in sorrow. He was born in sorrow and they called his name pain. What a beginning. What a way to come into the world. Surrounded by sorrow. And called for the rest of your days pain. And he lived with this. Every day of his life, every time somebody called Jabez, they, he knew his name was pain. And he knew that sorrow had come upon his family. He was born in pain. He was born in sorrow. And it followed him all the days of his life. And then we come to this prayer. I don't know how old he was here. I don't know how much water had been under the bridge. I don't know how much time had come to pass. But I, I, I see him here now. He had been born in sorrow. He had been called pain all of his life. And now he cries out to God and says this. Oh that thou would bless me indeed. <laughs> you see, it has nothing to do with divine wealth. It has nothing to do with prosperity. But it has everything to do with being tired of being cursed. <laughs> 
I won't preach to somebody here yet this morning. I said it has everything to do with being tired of being cursed. Being tired of everybody looking down on you. Tired of the whispers. Tired of people talking behind your back. Tired of of, of living under the family's dirty little secret. Tired of living in the shadow of what happened to you. Tired of, of things that you had no control over. And so you were born in sorrow. Surrounded by sorrow and lived a life of pain and he got tired of it and he cried out to God everybody else has cursed me my mama cursed me my family cursed me but oh God if somehow you could just bless me it would turn it all around Can I tell you the blessing of God is more powerful than the cursing of men? I'm going to tell you today the blessing of God is more powerful, amen, than what's happened to you. The blessing of God is more powerful than what was done to you. The the blessing of God is more powerful than what you did to somebody else. Somebody under the sound of my voice today needs to say, I'm tired of my past. I'm tired of being called by who I was. I want to cry out to God today and say, oh God. I've been cursed all my life but today today in this service in this sanctuary would you bless me indeed go ahead clap your hands go ahead talk to the Lord for a minute right now I feel something already beginning to break in this house I'm tired of the cursing. I'm tired of being called by what everybody says I am. I'm tired of being labeled by my past. I'm tired of being labeled by my mama, being labeled by my daddy, being labeled by what my grandpa did. Oh God, can you bless me? I can't get away from it, bless me. Bless me. I've been cursed in my relationships. I can't, my God, I'm preaching to somebody. I can't even have a normal relationship. I just mess it up. I can't even let anybody love me the way I want to be loved. Oh, God, couldn't you somehow bless a wreck like me? I'm a hot mess. Oh, God, can you bless me? It's hard to let somebody love you when your own mother called you pain. It's hard to let somebody love you when your own mother, amen, said you were born in sorrow. Amen. It's hard to let somebody, I'm preaching to somebody, it's hard to let somebody love you when your birth was a fiasco. Oh, God. Mama doesn't have the power to bless me. She cursed me. Daddy doesn't have the power to bless me. Oh God, if I'm going to shake this thing, I'm going to need the blessing that can only come from God. Would you bless me? Say it again to him. Would you bless me? God, would you bless me today? God, would you bless me today? Would you bless my family? My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Some of you right now need to get on your feet and shake off a generational curse that's been on your family. A curse of alcoholism, a a curse of perversion, a a curse of of poverty, a curse of a man, a a low self-esteem, a a curse of depression, a a curse of suicide. I shake it off. I shake it off today. Oh, God, I've been cursed by the world. I've been cursed by hell. But can you bless me today? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Let that blessing come on you right now. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let that blessing. I didn't come to give you three points in a poem. I came to help somebody get over your past. Somebody to get healed of your hurt. My God. My God, I receive the blessing. I receive. Say it out loud. I receive the blessing of God. 
It's easy to receive the curse, Brother Hines. It's easy to receive curses. It's easy to believe what everybody else says about me. But just for a moment in this house, can you begin to hear what God is saying about you? He says, I love you. I've never stopped loving you. I've never given up on you. I've never walked away from you. Oh, the Bible says when my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Somebody say I'm blessed. Somebody say I'm blessed. Somebody say I feel blessing coming. Somebody say I feel the curse going. I feel the curse lifting. Bless me, oh God. You could be seated. It wasn't about getting rich. It was about getting out from underneath the curse that he had lived under for so long. Listen, now he goes on, and I'm having a hard time moving on, but he, he prays for more than just blessing so that you would bless me indeed. He goes on to say this, and enlarge my coast. Enlarge my borders. Now I'm going to prophesy to some people here right now. Because the enemy, because of what you've been through, because of your birth, because of your raising, because of your childhood, because of the curse that has been spoken over your life, you have put yourself in a little box and you've said, I'm going to stay here all the days of my life. My grandma lived in poverty. My mama lived in poverty. I'm going to live in poverty. Come on, am I preaching to you here today? My grandma was an alcoholic. My mama was an alcoholic. I I'm an alcoholic. I was raised in the North End. My daddy was raised in the North End. I'm never ever, ever going to get out of the North End. Let me preach to somebody. When the blessing of God comes on your life, He begins to enlarge your borders, enlarge you, get you out of your box, take you out of your comfort zone. I won't prophesy to somebody else. Some of you are trying to get out of the north end. Some of you are trying to get out of the inner city. No. God needs you in the inner city. He needs a Holy Ghost filled person full of boldness to, to push back the darkness and to be the light. So stay in the north end, but get the north end out of your spirit. So stay in the inner city, but give up your brass knuckles and your, and your switchblade. I said you can live in the inner city. Just give God your cocaine, crack, and meth. Amen. And live straight and walk right. Hey, I don't only want to be blessed. I want to get out of the box. I want to get out of the prison I've been living in. Oh, God, don't just bless me, but increase my borders. Take me where I've never been. Oh, somebody needs to say that right now. God, take me where I've never been. In the realm of the Holy Ghost, in the realm of the Spirit, help me have experiences I've never known before. Woo! He taught a hashanana. Something stirring in this room now. When you get from out from under the curse and you start living under the blessing, and the God begins. God begins to take you out of your borders and out of your territories. And somebody said to me recently, they said, I know I'm a child of God, but I still got a lot of street in me. No, no, no. Stop pigeonholing yourself. God don't just want to bless you. You see, my God, I'm going to my God, help me today. I'm just going to tear it all up. God ain't going to bless you. You hear me now? God ain't going to bless you like the precious man and woman of God that you want to be while you're still acting like you belong in a street gang. Right. 
when every other word comes out of your mouth is a four letter one you need to get saved all over again you need to get to an altar. I might be from the inner city. I might be from the north end. My mama might have been a hooker. And my daddy ought to, might have been a pimp. But I am a child of God. And I don't walk like that. I don't talk like that. I don't act like that. I don't look like that. I don't sound like that. Why? Because I'm not living under that curse. I'm living under the blessing. And God has expanded my borders. Woo! Hold up, Atanama. Hallelujah. My God, he's doing something in this room. Woo! Bless me, God. Bless me, God. I know what it's like to be cursed. I'd like to know what it feels like to be blessed. Bless me, God. Bless me, God. Bless me, God. Oh, it's coming. My God, I feel it on somebody right now. Go ahead, raise your hand and shout a bit. Go ahead, go ahead, just let it go. Come on, blessings coming to you right now. The curse is lifting off of you because of the blood, because of whose you are, because of the anointing that's in this room. Hey! Hey! I'm not T.D. Jakes, but I feel it. Tell somebody, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready! Blessing is coming! You've lived under the curse long enough. Step out. Be free. Be healed. Be delivered. Bless me, oh God. And expand my bar. It was your granddaddy who should have protected you that sneaked into your bedroom in the middle of the night. grown up pain pain every time you look in the mirror there's pain ah. every time somebody calls your name pain ah, sorrow pain and you've owned it I come today to tell you, you don't have to own it another day. I said, you don't have to own it another day. Because this, this service, God is lifting the curse. It's lifting. Right now, raise your hands. It's lifting off of you. It's lifting off of you. It's lifting off you. Bless her, God. Bless her indeed. And expand her borders. Yeah, let it go. That's pain coming out. Let it go. Hey. Uh, I can't reach him. I can't reach him. Pain come out. Your name will no longer be called pain. And you are not born in sorrow. But the joy of the Lord is coming into your spirit and into your life. Uh, you are not who the devil says you are. You are who God says you are. Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You spent some time in jail. Hey, Amen. But God put you there. Hey, Amen. So he could change your name. So he could change your future. So he could turn things around. Pain. No, no, no. My name's not pain. My name is blessed. I am blessed and highly favored. 
I'm the head and not the tail. And he prayed. Look, your hand would be with me. I've got five pages of notes. I'm not off my first scripture. But I'm not going to preach five pages. Look, your hand would be with me. It amazes me how many people will come to an altar and God will touch them and they'll cry and they'll have an experience but then they'll walk out and go back to the same old things the same old drug the same old lifestyle listen to me now what God does for you today as he lifts that curse and that blessing comes upon you and as he begins to expand your borders the next thing out of your mouth ought to be oh God don't ever take your hand off of me don't ever take your hand off of my life God I'm going to serve you for the rest of my days with all my heart, with all my might, with all my strength, with all my mind. Don't take your hand off of my life. It's a commitment. See, we want the blessings of God with no commitment. But Jabez understood, pastors, he understood that if I'm going to come out of this curse and I'm going to live under the blessing, the blessing, Brother Patrice, Pastor Patrice, the blessing is only there so long as the hand of God is there. And that would keep me from evil. I won't go back. I can't go back to where I was, to where I came from. God, lift the curse. Give me your blessing. Place your hand on my life. And oh God, keep me from evil. This is not a prayer for riches. This is a prayer for a changed life. The psalmist said in Psalm 30, 11, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. I want you to understand, and I'm closing this morning. God specializes in turning pain into promise. Your past into a future. Your failure into success. Your weakness into strength. The psalmist said in 42, 40 and verse 2, He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Out of the miry clay and set my feet up on a rock and established my goings. We've read this many times, but let me read it to you again. It says, do you think God can't use you? Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused by his own family. Moses stuttered. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair, but I really don't believe he had it in a man bun. I'm sorry. <laughs> Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah was too young. David had an affair and was a murderer. My God. Elijah was suicidal. Isaiah preached naked. Thank God no more. Jonah ran from God. John the Baptist ate bugs. Job went bankrupt. Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep at prayer meeting. 
Martha worried about everything. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer. And Lazarus was dead. But God, if you can bless me, I can be whatever you make me to be. For your desperation has driven you to almost committing suicide at times. You have had thoughts about ending it all and letting the pain drift away. But I am your God today, says the Lord of hosts, and I am in this place to save your life. I have come into this service to turn you around, to wipe clean your past and to give you a future and a hope, says the Lord. I am here this day if you will receive me and allow me to lift the curse and bless you. I will make your life beautiful, says the Lord. This is your moment. This is the day of salvation for you. Do not turn me aside, but come to me, says the Lord. Oh, This altar's open right now. This altar's open. My God, Rabbi Kong, the Holy Ghost just gave the altar call. Come on. God himself just gave the altar call. Come on. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's time for the curse to be dealt with. It's time for the curse to lift. That's it. My God, look at them come. My God, pastors, I need your help. My God, look at them come. Oh, this is what revival looks like right here. Hey, that's it. Come on, cry it out. Put out those tears. Go ahead. The curse is being broken. The curse is being lifted right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. You talk, 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 shut up. Hey, baby, 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 hey. Yeah, come on, don't worry about the don't worry about the tears. Don't worry about the groaning, the moaning. That's the sound of pain coming out. That's the sound of curses being lifted.